Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, hi my name's Ava and I'm a mortgage power planner. In today's video I want to go over buy to lets as I know a lot of people are currently thinking about investing in property for the very first time. So I wanted to create this video which will outline the six things I believe you should know before you invest in rental property. As way of background, buy to let properties are extremely popular in the UK. Just last year in 2019, the estimated number of landlords was 2.66 million, which is just an incredible figure. Now, I know when I ask people, you know, what do you want to do in the future? What do you see yourself doing? Or, you know, if you won the lottery, what would you do? A lot of people tell me they would invest in property. A lot of people don't actually know what's involved in buy to let properties or even how to go about them. So I wanted to do this video just to give you guys a bit of an overview as to how it works and what you need to do and what you need to have in order to be able to invest in property. So the first thing you need to be aware of is the fact that majority of lenders will not lend to you unless you already own a property. So if you're a first time buyer, it is very unlikely that you'll be able to secure a buy to let mortgage. So your only other option is to actually buy outright. So you must have the full amount of money waiting there for you to be able to buy the property that you want to rent out. But in normal circumstances, if you are looking to obtain a mortgage in order to purchase the buy to let property, property you must already own your own home now the second thing to bear in mind kind of following up from the mortgage side of things is the fact that you will require to have at least 25% deposit saved up as the lender will normally limit the amount they're going to lend you to 75% of the value of the property but this varies with each lender. 75 is what I've seen to be kind of the, the ballpark figure. And just something else to bear in mind on the mortgage side of things is a buy to let mortgage typically is an interest only mortgage. If you do want to find out more about interest only mortgages, I do actually have a separate video talking about them. So with a buy to let mortgage, as I said, they are typically on an interest only basis. So you don't actually make any repayments throughout the term. Majority of lenders just expect you to sell the property that you are renting out in order to repay the mortgage at the end of the term. A lot of lenders will also impose a minimum income requirement which tends to be in the region of £25,000 but ultimately there are affordability assessments that will be carried out in order to ensure that you are in a suitable financial position in order to be able to take on that extra commitment especially if you are currently paying a mortgage. Number three is the fact that the lender will actually look at the rental cover when assessing the mortgage. So what that means is your rental income must be a certain percentage higher than what your monthly repayments are on your mortgage. Now this figure tends to be kind of in the region of 135 to 145%. So in effect, your rental income must be at least 145% higher than what your loan repayments are on a monthly basis. And if you do already have a property in mind, I would definitely highly recommend talking to a mortgage advisor as they'll be able to actually calculate what the rental cover will be on that property based on the products out there in the market, which will just give you some figures to work with. Number four, all the extra costs that are actually involved with a buy-to-let property and with managing a buy-to-let property. Because don't forget, once you buy a buy-to-let, you are a landlord, so you are liable for any maintenance, any repairs, anything that goes wrong with the property, it's actually on you because you can't expect the tenants to pay for the repairs, they'll be expecting you to do so. So if the boiler breaks, if there's a leak in the house, anything like that, it is your responsibility to sort out. So on top of obviously any mortgage associated costs, any purchase associated costs, such as your legal fees, valuation fees, mortgage arrangement fees, any broker fees, insurance costs, you should probably set up a separate pot that will actually build up money, like a reserve account to be able to pay, as I say, for any repairs, as well as to account for any no rent periods. There could be times in between 
tenants where the property is actually left unoccupied so you're not getting any rental income in but you still have to make your mortgage repayments so always make sure you've got a certain amount of money saved up in the reserve account to be able to use that money as I say to cover any no rent periods. Now number five follows on from the extra costs as it involves stamp duty so if you weren't already aware when you purchase a property over a certain amount there is a tax called stamp duty that is payable to the government on the purchase of your house. Now when it comes to buy to let properties because they are deemed an additional property that you were buying if the property value is over £40,000, you will have to pay stamp duty. Now, initially, it is at 3% up to £125,000, and above that, it is 3% higher than your standard rate bands. So if you want to know a bit more about normal stamp duty, I do have a video explaining it in a lot more detail and how it works, which I will link up here and also in the description box below for you to have a look at. But ultimately, what you need to bear in mind is you will most likely have to pay some sort of stamp duty on your buy-to-let property, unless, of course, you are lucky enough to get one for under £40,000, which is probably very rare. So if you do well done and the final thing i want to discuss and everybody hates this and that's tax the dreaded t word tax i hate that word so you may already be aware that you will have to pay income tax on any rental income that you receive from the property which you'll have to declare via self-assessment so if you're currently employed your tax is normally paid by your paye so you don't really get involved in that process whatsoever your employer automatically pays the tax to the government so you don't have to worry about it if you are self-employed you already know that there's this thing called self-assessment which is what you use to obviously calculate the amount of tax you're going to have to pay by inputting all your income figures as well as all your expenses. So when you own a buy-to-let property, it's a similar process in that you'll have to complete a self-assessment form detailing all the income that you've earned in that particular period, as well as obviously any expenses that you can deduct from that. Now, I would always say consult an accountant who specialises in property, as they'll be able to tell you what costs you can actually offset against, minimise the amount of tax that you have to pay. But as I say, I'm not an accountant, so I am not in the best position to advise you on that. So do contact a professional. Now, the second tax I want to touch upon is capital gains tax which not a lot of people are actually aware of because it's not one that tends to affect people as much now because the buy to let property is not your main residence it's an additional property that you are buying when you come to sell the property which you most likely will have to to repay the mortgage that you've got on it unless of course you repay it in other ways any profit that you make on that property will be liable to capital gains tax now there are two separate bands for capital gains tax depending on your actual income tax rate but i won't go into that in this video if you are at a point where you're looking to sell your buy to let property you will most likely incur capital gains tax costs which once again is something you'll need to account for when planning to invest in property so that is it for today's video guys i hope you found it useful and i hope i've given you some pointers to consider or to have a think about before jumping and investing in property there are so many other things that need to be considered when buying a buy to let property but i don't want to cram them all into one video i'll probably do a separate video talking more about actually buying a buy to let property and the different ways you can do that so subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out also if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up as it really helps my channel to grow and reach a wider audience so thank you for watching and i'll see you back on monday with a brand new video bye guys